Section 2. Security Appliances As part of the Cisco Express Networking Certification, you are required to understand the fundamentals of Cisco Meraki security products. The MX is the Cisco Meraki series of security appliances. In this video, we will cover the MX Platform Overview, Models of MX Security Appliances, Licensing and Features, Automatic Site-to-Site -site VPN, Malware Protection, Software-defined WAN, High Availability, and how to choose the correct size of MX for your requirements. Let's get into it. MX Platform Overview. The MX is a 100% cloud-managed appliance providing comprehensive security, networking, and application control features. On top of the standard security features you'd expect to find in a quality next-generation security appliance, such as stateful firewalling, VPNs, intrusion detection and prevention services, the MX also includes advanced malware protection, layer 7 visibility, content filtering, traffic shaping and software-defined WAN. From a reliability standpoint, each model of MX has dual fixed WAN interfaces and a cellular uplink to maximize the uptime of your network. They also support a warm spare failover and redundant power supplies on certain models. Being cloud managed, threat definitions and filter lists are automatically updated as soon as a new vulnerability or malicious website is identified. Definitions, security patches and new feature updates are pushed out from the cloud to each of your devices, ensuring your networks are always up to date and protected. These updates can be delivered as soon as they become available or in a pre-scheduled maintenance window that suits your needs. The single pane of glass cloud-based dashboard provides end-to-end -end visibility and reporting for all your Meraki devices. Rich graphical reports, in-depth usage analytics, and intuitive configuration and troubleshooting tools are all included out of the box and accessible wherever you have a browser and an internet connection. MX Security Appliance Models There's an MX Security Appliance to suit every network. From the ultra-compact teleworker device supporting 5 users to the MX600 which is capable of handling 10,000 users. The Z1 is an ideal device for ultra-small offices, telecommuters or even as a remote access out-of-band management device. The MX64 is our most popular device making up over 50% of all our security appliances shipped to date. The MX65 adds to the feature set of the 64 by adding two PoE Plus ports and increasing the overall number of gig interfaces from 5 to 12. Both the MX64 and the MX65 come in a W designation for wireless. The built-in wireless features 802.11ac with up to 1.2 gigabits per second throughput and four separate SSIDs. They're both capable of 250 megabits of firewall throughput 100 megabits of VPN throughput, and are recommended for installations of up to 50 users. They're a great branch-in-a-box solution. For the medium branch, we have the MX84 and MX100. The MX84 has 10 copper gigi interfaces and two SFP ports. Firewall throughput is 500 megabits per second, and VPN throughput is 250. The device is recommended for networks of up to 200 users. The MX100 has 9 copper gig E ports and 2 SFP ports. Firewall throughput is 750 megabits per second with VPN throughput of 500 megabits per second. Select this device for networks of up to 500 users. At Meraki, we use the MX100 at our Sydney and London offices. The MX400 covers off our head office. The MX400 and 600 are our large campus devices. They're modular platforms supporting a range of interface types, including copper gig E, SFP gig E, and SFP plus 10 gig E. Redundant power supplies are included in both devices. Both security appliances have firewall and VPN throughput of one gigabit per second. The MX400 is capable of supporting 2000 users and the 600 is capable of supporting 10,000 users. 
The maximum connection count is 1 million and 2 million respectively. MX Feature License Subscriptions The MX Security Appliance is an exception to the Meraki product portfolio in that it supports two levels of license. Out of the box, your MX will include the Enterprise Feature License. The included enterprise features are super powerful and may exceed many of your customers' needs. The site-to-site -site auto VPN feature is sufficient reason alone to choose MXs for your networks. This is a cloud-brokered VPN service that allows you to build a dynamic, self-healing, resilient IPsec VPN in a couple of clicks of your mouse. Software-defined WAN adds intelligence and automation to your traffic flows. It's a transport independent service that supports policy based routing and allows for dynamic path selection based on application type, link quality, and other factors. High availability failover ensures maximum uptime for your network in the event of a device failure. Application control and traffic shaping allow you to get super granular with what you want to allow on your network and determine how much bandwidth you want to allocate to each application type. The slightly more expensive advanced security license includes all of the enterprise features plus a bundle of additional security subscription services to enhance your appliance's capability. These include Google Safe Search and YouTube for Schools, Cisco Advanced Malware Protection with its Global Threat Intelligence Network, Cisco Sourcefire IDS and IPS to detect and protect traffic between the internet and the LAN, as well as VLAN to VLAN. ThreatGrid Behavioral Monitoring provides sandbox execution of potentially malicious files. And IP Geolocation Database for geographical based firewall rules. The most important thing to know about these two licenses is that you must be running the same licensing level organization-wide. Now you may have multiple networks within your organization and say, hey, I really want to run advanced security at my head office, but only enterprise out at the branches and for the teleworkers. Well, you're not able to do that. All MXs in the organization must be licensed to either all enterprise or all advanced security. Now there is a workaround to this. You could put the headquarters MX in one organization and the branch offices in another, but it's not ideal. Firstly, you'll lose your aggregated end-to-end -end reporting and analytics as this rolls up to an organizational level. Secondly, you won't be able to take advantage of the auto VPN to automatically configure and heal your site-to-site -site VPNs. You can still set up non-Meraki VPNs between organizations like you would to an ASA or Azure, but you'll lose some of the really compelling features that are in Auto VPN. So our recommendation is have all MXs in the one organization. MX feature, automated site-to-site -site VPN. This feature alone is enough to deploy Meraki MXs at every single site in your network. VPNs are something that has traditionally been complicated to set up and support and prone to misconfiguration. Picture this, you've shipped a router out to a new branch office that's being set up. You configured it all on your desk before it left, it just needs to be plugged in when it gets to site. Barry, the cabling contractor, is on site and has racked up the equipment and plugged it in. But the tunnel just won't come up. You phone Barry. Barry, I need you to console into the router and type some commands for me. Uh, okay. Which one's the console port? 30 minutes later, you've got Barry set up, you finally configure a serial port, you download PuTTY, and you've got a console. We're getting there. Okay, Barry, I want you to type show run and hit enter. Okay, now scroll down until you see the word crypto and read to me what it says there. Hmm, this is gonna be a long, slow process. Does this scenario sound familiar to anyone? I know it's happened to me. With Meraki MX auto VPN feature, all of the headache of site-to-site -site VPNs is removed. Because all Meraki devices talk to the centralized cloud dashboard to fetch their configurations, you'll never again end up in a situation phoning Barry 
to step him through crypto maps or hashing methods due to a bricked offline device. Not only is the distribution of configuration seamless, the actual setup of the VPNs couldn't be easier. It's a simple matter of clicking a radio button to select whether your MX is a hub or a spoke. Then, if you've selected spoke, picking a hub from the drop-down list. Now, if you want to add resilience to your network, you can select a second hub or a third and arrange them in order of preference. Finally, browse the list of local networks and check yes or no as to whether you'd like them to be available on the VPN. You're done. It's as simple as that. You now have a fully resilient hub and spoke VPN between your sites. Because the VPN is cloud brokered, if your MX is on a dynamic IP and changes its address, it'll simply update the dashboard and the new configs will be pushed out to all the other MXs that are participating in the VPN. Easy stuff. From a monitoring and troubleshooting perspective, Dashboard gives a really beautiful and intuitive view of your VPNs, as you can see on the right hand side of this slide. Usage and latency graphs and a breakdown of all peer information is right at your fingertips. Plus, the circular chart on the right of the page shows you visually how much traffic is traversing each site-to-site -site link. MX feature, malware protection. Like all things Meraki, we like to offer comprehensive features with minimal complexity. The Cisco Advanced Malware Protection Team and the Meraki MX teams worked really hard to bring the best anti-malware solution in the industry to the MX platform. Now that it's fully integrated, the MX gets access to the AMP Global Intelligence Database with the ease of use of the Meraki dashboard. The AMP Intelligence Database has over half a billion known files and receives a million new samples every day. This means that your network can be protected even from the newest of threats because AMP is watching your back. Downloaded files will get checked in real time against the global AMP database. We can even retrospectively detect malware. Now, no solution can detect 100% of the malware. One of your users might be unlucky enough to be patient zero. If they happen to download some malware that's not yet been identified as a threat, but is a few hours or a few days later, you as the administrator will get notified so that you can take corrective action against the files that have already been downloaded. The Security Center gives you a graphical view of what threats have been blocked, where they're coming from, and which users or hosts are triggering them. It also combines information from the IPS and IDS so that you're presented with a more holistic view of your security landscape. ThreatGrid provides sandbox execution of unknown files either in the cloud or on a local sandbox. You can monitor and play back the actions performed by the file to determine its intent. Software-defined WAN characteristics. SD-WAN provides MPLS-like functionality at a fraction of the cost or complexity. There are four main areas that Gartner says are required to classify a solution as SD-WAN. The first of those is transport independence. The solution must be completely agnostic to the underlying connection type. So it doesn't matter if you build your SD-WAN over the top of an existing carrier MPLS network, the public internet, LTE, 3G, satellite, or even dial-up, it's gonna work. Secondly, SD-WAN needs to offer dynamic path selection. The SD-WAN enabled appliance must be able to identify multiple paths and offer some sort of intelligence in how it chooses to best route to the destination without manual intervention. A simple interface for managing the WAN. Well, if the interface is not simple, we might as well go back to hand configuring MPLS PE routers via the CLI and it must support VPNs. To create an overlay WAN, we need to stitch together all of these features somehow and make sure it's secure and can advertise our local networks to remote sites. This is achieved by the use of virtual private networks. So at Meraki, our MX appliances absolutely meet and exceed all of these requirements set out by Gartner. MX feature software-defined WAN. 
So how do we go about implementing this? SD-WAN completely abstracts the transport away from the service, giving complete transport independence. We do this by using our auto VPN functionality. As long as there is IP reachability, auto VPN will build the IPsec overlay tunnels. Application optimization. As with all Meraki devices, application visibility is built right in. You can use this application awareness combined with quas and traffic shaping and ensure super granular control over the traffic flows on your WAN. Meraki supports not only failover and load sharing, but granular intelligent path selection based on individual traffic flows and traffic types. You can set specific rules based on source address, destination address, port number, application type, or a combination of any of those things. As well as brute failover, when a link goes down, we also support soft failover of individual traffic types based on custom criteria. So what does this mean? Well, you can set up a custom performance class that says, for example, VoIP traffic should be on a path with less than 150 milliseconds of delay. The preferred link for this voice service may not fail completely, but due to congestion or upstream issues, have high latency. The MX device will monitor these thresholds and dynamically move the voice traffic over to a more suitable WAN connection. No waiting for users to call up and complain about voice quality, no manual intervention. So this is intelligent path control. From a security perspective, the overlay VPN isn't just providing a virtualized transport, but it's also a secure encrypted tunnel. This can give you the comfort that your private corporate data can traverse the public internet without any fear of compromise. MX feature highlight, failover and high availability. Mission critical networks can't afford to be down. At Meraki, we've built multiple layers of redundancy into our MX product line to protect your networks against WAN failure, power interruption, and appliance faults. In the event of an appliance failure, the warm spare feature will ensure that your site stays online automatically. Because your configurations and features are synchronized from the cloud, all of your firewall rules, DHCP configuration and leases, VPNs, and advanced security services will continue to operate off the backup device. Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, VRRP, ensures minimal interruption to client devices as the switchover happens. Dual redundant WAN connections means you have the option of protecting your network connectivity to the internet via multiple service providers. This can be achieved with a basic failover or using concurrent load balancing if required. Granular traffic control rules allow you to specify what traffic takes priority on each link and ensure that in a failover event, your most critical traffic continues to operate as expected. All MX devices also support cellular WAN, providing a third option to access the internet in the event of a total exchange outage or a backhoe event. High availability is simple to configure and monitoring of links and devices is all directly from the dashboard. Alerts can be configured to notify the administrator of a failure event so a ticket can be raised with your service provider or an RMA arranged for the device. Resource, MX Sizing Guide. This document is available on our website via the link at the bottom of the slide. Alternatively, just Google Meraki MX Sizing Guide. It's a fantastic resource for helping you with the question, which MX is the best fit for my network? The sizing guide provides a side-by-side -side comparison of each model of MX so you can select firstly the physical requirements such as port quantity and type, PoE, power and so forth, and then compare line rate network performance. It goes on to articulate each security feature and the comparative performance impact of enabling that service. Most useful though are the real world use cases. These cases have been developed in collaboration between product development, engineering, and the sales teams off real-world customer networks. Do you want to know what a K-12 school with limited bandwidth would look like? How will their device perform with 
NAT, content filtering, layer 7 firewall rules, traffic shaping, malware protection, safe search, and web caching all turned on. Well, it's in the sizing guide. How about a college that's a high bandwidth user but only wants to enable NAT, malware protection, and layer 7 to block BitTorrent? Well, that's in the sizing guide too. Retail services for branches or head offices? All in the sizing guide. So this is your go-to resource for comparing our products against each other and as a tool to use when comparing us to our competitors. We constantly revise and update it as we add new products and features to our security portfolio. In this video we discussed the MX platform, various models of MX security appliance, licensing type and features, the cloud brokered automatic site-to-site -site VPN, malware protection, software-defined WAN, high availability features, and how to choose the correct size of MX for your requirements. This concludes the video on the MX series of security appliances. I hope it's been informative. Hi, my name is Joe, and in this video I'm going to show you how to give an effective Cisco Meraki MX security appliance demo. All of this demoing will be done in the Cisco Meraki dashboard that you see before you. And in addition to some general demo tips, we're also going to cover four specific key feature areas that are important to include in demos. Uh, the first of those is next generation firewall functionality. The second is advanced threat capabilities. The third one that we'll talk about is VPN. And finally, software defined WAN or SD WAN, as you may have heard it called. First of all, a lot of security customers look at the MX as, before anything else, a firewall. So it's important to demonstrate that it has the core firewall functionality that they expect from a perimeter security device. This security appliance firewall page has most of that functionality contained in it. Um, it's very easy to demonstrate how to add a new firewall rule at layer three, simply by, say, creating a deny all rule and then creating a series of rules above it. And we can reorder them here with this little compass point icon. So if we want to allow ICMP traffic from a particular subnet to any destination or to a particular subnet and say allow ping from voice subnet, we can do that, right? We can demonstrate how easy it is to configure these rules in this dashboard. It's important to call out that while these can be configured on a network by network level at individual locations and on individual MXs, you can also configure this in a template format where you have one configuration shared across multiple MXs. So that makes it very, very easy to apply these firewall rules at scale. Now, while layer three firewalling is important, more and more the industry is moving towards application level firewalling, the layer seven component. So that's where you really wanna focus your time on this page. Down here in the layer seven firewall section, you can again demonstrate how easy it is to create something like a rule blocking BitTorrent traffic or even all peer to peer traffic. Another rule that is blocking sports related traffic another rule that is blocking an individual HTTP host name like hp.com. So again, it's important to focus on the simplicity, how easy it is to accomplish these functions. It's all GUI, it's all point and click. Now, this is probably the most straightforward functionality in the MX because it is just firewall functionality. When we move past just perimeter firewalling and into the more advanced threat protection, that's where some of the really powerful Cisco technologies that we've implemented come into play. So moving away from this firewall page and to what we call the threat protection page. Threat protection in the MX involves two major components. Advanced malware protection or AMP and a snort based intrusion detection and intrusion prevention engine. These are both very, very important to effective security, malware and IPS. Um, the intrusion prevention and detection are also very, very important in the retail vertical because they are required for PCI compliance. So retail customers will have to have these in order to meet those compliance standards. The most powerful thing about demoing the AMP and the IPS 
components is that it's much, much simpler to configure and very easy to manage compared to a lot of other solutions out there. So the AMP configuration is literally a light switch. You turn AMP on, you are protected. You are protected against millions of known threats. You're protected by the Talos Cisco security uh, intelligence and threat research team. You are protected by the, the entire breadth of Cisco security's presence in the industry, all with that one click. And that's a really compelling story to tell when demoing this feature. Now, for those of you who may be worried that this isn't enough to demo for this, I will show you in just a moment how to demo the monitoring interface, which adds a lot of value there and has a lot of really cool demo flows that you can use to show how this can be used to make a network more secure. You can also whitelist individual URLs or files if you are doing internal testing or if there are things that maybe you believe are false positives, you have that ability here. For intrusion detection and prevention, it's a very similar story. Um, you either enable detection or prevention Prevention, of course, including blocking. And you select your rule set, connectivity being the most lax, balanced being somewhere in the middle, and security being the most restrictive rule set. And we define those rule sets and how they're generated in our documentation that's linked here on the page. Once you've configured these two features, again, these Cisco industry-leading technologies, you can go over to the Security Center page in order to monitor your threat posture. I recommend always demoing using the Organization Security Center link. This aggregates together this threat data from all of the locations rather than just looking at one. And so it will show you a bunch more data and allow you to look at this data broken down by which locations generated it, as well as a bunch of other information. So let's go through the Security Center page and look at what it can show us. First of all, we have our events over time, so we can see spikes, like this one right here at the end that we'll take a look at in a second. We can see which networks are most affected, networks in this case being locations. So San Francisco, uh, London, and a little bit of Sydney there are the most prominent generators of these threat events. We can see which clients generate the most events. There's a big outlier here, this one device generating a lot of threat events that may indicate something's wrong there that we may wanna dive into. We can see the sources of these threats, what are the servers out there in the world that we're seeing these threats be uh, coming from? And we can also see which threats are most prevalent. So we have these threats that are generating a lot more events than any of the other threats that we've seen. Now you can manipulate this data in a variety of ways. You can look at this at a more specific time frame, dive down into an individual day, for instance, or even an individual two hour period. You can pivot this on a specific network to only see that location. You can go to a specific client and show only data for that client, only data for a particular threat source, or only data for a particular threat. You also have the ability to dive in deeper on any of those areas and see things like the summary report for that network, the clients page that we looked at earlier for that individual client, a who is lookup for the source to see exactly where these threats are coming from, or more information about a threat, either through the snort signature or various documentation and threat publications that we'll link to there. All of this data can be viewed as well through the events page here, which shows the same data, but rather than summarizing it and aggregating it together, it shows the individual threat events or alerts in more of an event log style format. And you can actually, let's use the second client here, drill into that client and see their information, how they're connected to the network, right? what applications are using, the same data we saw before, and we can block them from the network or change their policy. This is another great way to show how easy it is to move from detecting a threat to preventing that threat from uh, accessing or further infecting your network. This user will now be blocked from the network until they bring their computer in and you can image it, reformat it, clean it up, and then get it back onto the network. So that's another really compelling story to tell to those customers that are interested in the security capabilities. Now let's shift from the security component over to talking more about the connectivity side of the house. There are two major pieces there that we wanna look at, and they're actually tied pretty closely together. Um, the first is what we call Meraki Auto VPN, which is our site-to-site -site VPN that connects different branches or different locations in a customer's environment. And the second will be SD-WAN, which actually uses those VPN tunnels, those connections that are created to determine the best way to send traffic between locations. So let's start with AutoVPN. 
AutoVPN is an incredibly powerful tool that we can use to connect different locations. And the reason it's so powerful is that it's very flexible, but it's incredibly easy to configure. So if I wanna create a connection between Sydney, San Francisco, and London, let's say I'm bringing up Sydney as a new office, and I wanna to talk to San Francisco and London. In order to do that with most implementations, I have to go through a series of steps where I'm inputting manual data to tell these devices how to connect to each other, how to trust each other, what to use as the security mechanisms, um, what kind of paths to take to get to each other, all of these pieces of information. Because all these MXs are talking to the Meraki cloud, we can automatically generate this data. We can actually broker these connections. And the way that we do that is with AutoVPN. So if I'm bringing up this new location, I can either have this be a hub, in other words, it's sort of a, a headquarters location that everything's talking to, or I can have it be a spoke, which means that it is a branch location talking back to a regional office, headquarter, data center, et cetera. If I wanna add hubs here, I just say Sydney connects to London and connects to San Francisco. And that's it. Once I've done that, and I decide which subnets I wanna include in the VPN, and I hit save, I've created that connection. Not only will this configure the Sydney MX, it'll actually configure London and San Francisco as well with all the information they need to build these tunnels, build these connections between locations. So this is gonna save the customer a ton of time, a ton of effort. It's one of the best features to demo, and it's one of the most well-received features of the product. So people get very excited about this, and I highly encourage you to include it in your demos. Once we've created these VPN tunnels, much like with the security components, we need a way to monitor that. That's where the VPN status page comes into play. VPN status page tells us what our connections are between these locations, how much bandwidth, right, how much traffic we're sending between locations, and what our latency looks like. With these same tunnels, we can now apply, with the new SD-WAN features, intelligence that helps us to determine how we get from site A to site B. So AutoVPN helps us to build the connections between A and B, but if we have multiple connections, we wanna be able to leverage those to do things like load balancing or intelligently selecting the best path for a certain type of traffic. And that's where SD-WAN comes in. So to configure SD-WAN, once you have these VPN tunnels up, you go to the traffic shaping page. The traffic shaping page contains all the configuration basically for determining how we're going to treat traffic, not so much from a security perspective as from an application delivery and performance uh, and efficiency perspective. So in this traffic shaping page, we have a whole section here called flow preferences, which is basically saying, which way should I send individual types of traffic? Internet traffic up here, or, and for the SD-WAN component, this is the most important piece, VPN traffic. So these are our SD-WAN policies that tell us how we're gonna send traffic over the VPN. And what these policies look like is you have a certain type of traffic that you've defined, in this case, any traffic coming from a specific portion of the network, and you're going to send it over whichever path is better for voice traffic. That's a built-in classification that we include based on what's called the MOS score, which is a standard industry scoring, performance scoring criteria for voice. Or you can set a specific uplink that you prefer, and you can actually set what we call dynamic path selection rules to say, I wanna use WAN2, my second uplink, but I wanna fail over to the other uplink if I don't have the performance I want. And you can define what that performance goal is, either with our pre-built, again, voice classification, or using custom classes that you configure back here on the same page under custom performance classes. So you configure the maximum acceptable latency, loss, and jitter, and then you create a policy that allows you to say that you're gonna send certain types of traffic only over paths that meet those performance criteria. This is very common for voice deployments, wanting to make sure that if you have multiple paths, you're always using one that has acceptable voice quality. It's also common for uh, business critical data applications where you might have very high performance needs, where you know a, an application that is gonna react very poorly if the performance on that link starts to fail. What this allows customers to do is to be able to have, say, two internet connections at a branch or an internet connection at an MPLS circuit and to not only load balance traffic across them between branches or between the branch and the data center or headquarters, 
in order to make the most of all that bandwidth they're paying for, but also to make sure that applications are delivered efficiently and with high performance based on the specific needs of those individual applications or types of traffic. So being able to say that you want to send your voice traffic over your MPLS because it's generally going to have better performance, but if that performance starts to fail, if there's an issue with the MPLS, you want to automatically fail that traffic over to an internet VPN is very powerful. It allows customers to drive down their cost, the connectivity costs for their branches, and it makes them, them more operationally efficient and reduces the amount of time they have to spend managing these kinds of uh, routing changes right, for their WAN when network conditions change. Again, on the monitoring side, it actually takes us back to that same VPN status page where we can look at, on this uplink decisions chart here, down here at the bottom, a live list of these decisions being made about where to send this traffic. So in our case, Sydney has two uplinks, two internet circuits. And it's talking to these other branches or these other locations. And we see a list here of all the flow decisions it's made about how to send this traffic. And it tells us what is the flow, which uplink was it sent over, and why. If we want to dive a little bit deeper into this, let's say into the connection between Sydney and San Francisco, we can click on this uplink decision and we can see historically over the last two hours, the last day, week, or month, what the performance looked like for those different connections. So in this case, we have Sydney to San Francisco coming from Sydney's first uplink going to both links in San Francisco or from Sydney's second uplink to both links in San Francisco. So we can see these paths. And when we look here, we see the latency, jitter, loss, and MOS score historically for both of those connections, or even all four of those connections, if you really want to see everything at once. Personally, I tend to demo using these two individual pages. I find them to be less cluttered and more easy for customers to consume and understand. Now, when I mouse over an individual time, I see for both of those paths what the loss, latency, jitter, and MOS score was at that time. So I can see basically which link is gonna be better at any given time. One really cool capability that I like to demo here is being able to mouse over a custom performance class and actually see a highlighted green area that represents that performance threshold. So we see here, if we look at the jitter threshold, green represents acceptable jitter for voice based on our criteria that we've, that we've set up in dashboard. We can see the blue line representing the current or rather historical jitter going over that green area in several places. So in those inflection points, at those times, this link was considered unacceptable for voice. So if the other link was acceptable, we would have failed voice traffic over to it. So it's a very easy way to demonstrate how this path decision-making works, and it allows customers to see how they can audit this and go back and look at this and determine why a path change uh, actually occurred. Why was this traffic flipped over from WAN 1 to WAN 2? Well, it's because the jitter went above the acceptable threshold. There are several other features that we could demo. I think those are the four key ones that we wanted to highlight in this video. So again, next generation firewalling, intrusion prevention and AMP under the advanced threat umbrella, VPN, and software-defined WAN. If you can demo those four components effectively, you'll be able to combine the ones you need to build a effective demo for pretty much any audience. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video and uh, happy demoing.